What's up, all my fellow speedsters and all many humans throughout the multiverse? It's Kevin here. Welcome back to another reaction on the channel. Today, we're going to be reacting to Star Girl Season 1, Episode 7, I think? Yeah, I think it's Episode 7. Um, let me just you know, check that on DC Universe. Uh, yeah, Episode 7. Shiv Part 1. So, it's going to be our first uh, multi part ep arc, I guess. Okay, I'm actually kind of interested. Um, yeah, I need to. Read the synopsis again. Um, okay, it's just basic stuff. So it looks like pa Pat's gonna be training them, I guess. Well, he's, it says he's gonna teach them the value of teamwork. So, you know, basic uh, hero stuff. So I'm wondering how they're gonna train or they're gonna train themselves. Because that was a big question I was asking because um, I knew that they were gonna get their asses beat by uh, the ISA with because they, they do not know how to work together. Um, so I'm very curious to see um, how the whole training situation is going to go. And I'm also curious if we're going to meet any more ISA members, because I think we've seen them all. We haven't seen the original Fiddler, but um, for the most part, we've seen all of them. I mean, except Shade, but I think he's, he uh, left the ISA. So I'm wondering if shit, we could possibly see Shade come into the fold. I, I doubt it, though, because I remember... I don't remember what episode, I think it was like one of the earlier episodes, I think it was Dragon King that said that Shade deserved the ISA betrayed Icicle, and I don't remember if they said that he was dead or not, uh, someone told me in the comments, uh, if they do, because I do appreciate you guys in the comments that like correct me and uh, see stuff that I forget about, because that's really appreciative, um, but um, yeah, because I'm thinking that... I'm I'm wondering if that's just throwaway. It's probably just throwaway dialogue. If it's not, that could be an interesting story point. Like maybe Pat runs into the shade conveniently in Blue Valley. I mean, all the ISA members are in uh, Blue Valley anyway. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm very curious to see if they're gonna do that. They probably won't, but I can see them going down down that direction. But um, yeah, I actually really did like episode six. I think. It's five and episode six are my favorite episodes i think i might like five, episode five a little bit more because it did focus more on uh, some more of the character building mainly with rick beth um no i i don't think um i i'm pretty sure i did not say this in case if i did i want to clarify that i do not hate beth as a character i just need a little bit more time with her because she just doesn't fit the hero role for me personally uh, for what I've seen so far, I think maybe it's just because I need more time with Beth's character. Because kind of, Beth just kind of seems like she's kind of there. She doesn't really seem that important to me, personally. Uh, she does have the AI of the original Dr. Midnight. Uh, but other than that, she's kind of useless. Um, but hopefully they find some way to make her character more relevant and useful. Because for now, for the time being, she kind of seems like she's there. I know some people have that. I've seen some people like uh, on Twitter... And also on my even on my comments saying that they they don't like Beth. Me personally, I don't think she's a bad character per se. I just think that she's kind of like um I don't want to say generic. She's not a generic character. Um, I guess for the time being, she's kind of boring for the time being. I'm hoping we might see more character driven uh, episodes for some of these other characters, particularly Beth, because Beth hasn't really had a whole lot of development. Um. But uh, we'll see, we'll see, and I'm very curious to see how the whole team dynamic is going to grow, especially when we see everybody, including Stripe, um, go out into the field and fight the ISA, because I'm wonder wondering when we're going to see that shot from one of the trailers of all the GSA members, including Stripe, going charging at the uh, ISA members um, in slow-mo, because I remember that was in one of the trailers, so I'm, assume so I'm wondering, that I don't think that's the finale Oh, but it could be, uh, who knows, but I don't think it's finale, uh, I think it'd be really bold of them to even show us any footage of the finale, but we'll see, um, but yeah, I'm very curious, uh, we also did see that, um, Cameron might be slowly developing his icicle powers, so we might see Icicle Jr., perhaps, uh, I'm very curious to see what they're gonna take into direction with, uh, Henry's, I mean, actually, I'll talk about Henry later with Cameron's character, uh, I was also um, made aware that one of my one of my uh, YouTube comments, uh, if I have time to edit that in, um, I'll put that up on the video screen right now, um, saying that um, Henry in the comics is a hero. So I'm wondering if they're going to go down that route or if they're going to make him a villain. Because for the time being, it looks like they might make him a, vil uh, a villain. 
Um, so we'll see. I'm also curious to see if they're going to make uh, Cameron, because it does seem like they're going to go the high school junior route, but I'm very curious to see if they're going to go somewhere different, because I know high school junior, at least from, uh, from what I know about high school junior, is that he's a villain. But maybe they could go the hero route. I could definitely see him going it going that way because Cameron doesn't really see like that bad of a guy he could go down the villain route like maybe he finds out um that his dad was uh, defeated or maybe like I think uh something that could strive uh Cameron to go full evil is if Rick actually does kill one of the ISA members and it does happen to be ice call I really doubt they would go down that route but let's say they do that could be a way to lead Cameron into the killing route because let's say he grows closer to some of the um, some of the characters like Courtney. Like he's already had a, a, a couple of scenes with Courtney, so maybe he grows closer to Courtney. Maybe she he finds out that Courtney and her specific friend group are the people that fought his father and killed him. And let's say he wants revenge. I could see them doing that if they wanted to go the villain route, but I just feel like that's kind of cliche and predictable. And I just don't really see them going down that route because I do eventually think that Rick will eventually develop as a character and decide, you know, I'm not gonna be like these bad guys that kill people. Um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a hero like my dad did, like my how my dad was, and not kill you, but I will throw you in prison or something. Because um, that, that's a little bit cliche, I guess too, but it's a better character art than Rick just, you know, killing Ice Cold or killing one of the Ice Age members. Because let's be completely honest, there is no way in hell he is taking down. Solomon Grundy, like, um, that, there's no way. Uh, our man is has some decent strength, but nothing compared to Solomon Grundy. Um, yeah, now, back to Henry. I do think they could, they will go the villain route, at least for what we've shown of Henry's character. Then again, we still have a decent amount of episodes, because we're only on the seventh episode, so maybe we could see a development episode with Henry. Maybe it could develop his character to finally leave Cindy. You think he, he should. Cindy's like the most toxic character, and I cannot stand her. I know that's the way they wrote her character, but she is like, she is so annoying. Like, uh, she's not, like, I don't even consider Beth annoying. I just think that she's just kind of a boring character and kind of there. Cindy is an annoying character, and I cannot stand her. <laughs> So I, I hope uh, Henry uh, takes the initiative and takes the initiative and uh, leaves her ass because uh, she's a fucking bitch. Okay, uh, well, let's be real here. She's a bitch. But um, yeah. Uh, with that side right out of the way, um, I I I just don't really see Henry going the hero route. Maybe he will. Maybe he'll have like some red damage. And, like I don't really see him and Yolanda getting back together. Um, unless he maybe. I don't know. I'm not really too sure how they're going to make him a hero if they're going to go the comic book route. But anyway, that's just my thing. Um, overall, uh, yeah, I know I've been talking a lot. I know I said I want to cut my intros down, but I just can't help myself. Well, I'm, I'm a talker, so I, I apologize for that. You guys can just uh, skip to um, the actual reaction and stuff. Uh, I'll probably put like a timestamp some, at some point in this intro discussion. But anyway, the fight... The fights were actually really good, and the choreography was really great, especially with Courtney and Courtney's fight scenes. Uh, I, I someone did mention that in the in one of my comments that um, Courtney um, is a black belt in karate. Now that part I didn't, I don't, I, I mean I didn't remember because it was never mentioned. But there was a, I think it was on her collage of pictures in the first episode with her as a black belt. So I actually I didn't, I don't remember that. So thank you for uh, clarifying that, because I, I, I know that she was in gymnastics, so maybe that, that's why she was so agile. But she uh, put up a really good fight, and if Tigress hadn't stepped in, I actually do think that she could have at least knocked out. Uh, I don't want to say she could have taken down Sportsmaster, but she put up a pretty good fight. Um, and Yolanda uh, had, got a couple hits in with Tigress, but she, yeah, she's still way too inexperienced. But Yolanda and Courtney, for the time being, are easily the best fighters. Because um, Courtney has agile martial arts experience combined with gymnastics, so she's a lot more agile. And uh, with Yolanda, she has boxing experience, and that's going to give her to an advantage in fighting. But and also with her new cat-like abilities, so you know that makes her a decent a decent fighter. But Tigress, I think, is like she's she seems like more of an assassin type of character, so she probably like knows like all. The, types of martial arts so that's why she lost but i really did like the choreography between the two of them 
The choreography for Rick isn't that... I'm not going to say it's bad, but it's not as good as the others. It's obvious because it's just the way his fighting style is. He's more of a brawler than an actual, you know, martial artist. Um, and yeah, Rick got his ass kicked. I think he got a couple hits in with Sportsmaster. And actually, in one of the shots, Sportsmaster actually sw hit Rick, like, really hard. Like, he actually, uh, got some air, air. like, he actually sent him pretty far. And for Because I actually thought that he had super strength for a second. Because, like, damn, that was one hard-ass hit. Um, so yeah, that's why, now I, that's me clarifying why I thought Sportsmaster had super strength for that one part in the episode where he swung our man a pretty far distance. Um, but, um, yeah, I have a damn, I've been talking for 10 minutes, but, um, overall, great episode. Um, I still like episode 5 a little bit more than episode 6 for the timing, but I'm not trying to say episode 6 was bad. I, I think episode 6 is, here's episode 5 for me because I really am a sucker for good character writing. Here's episode 6. It's, like, right up here. It's, like, right up there. Like, yeah, you can see that it's, like, uh, very, very close. I want. I could probably say it, it ties um, with episode 5. Uh, I just really like more character writing moments, but I really did like episode 6, because that was also uh, good character writing uh, for a lot of the other characters, because, you know, they are very, they were overconfident and got their asses kicked, but now they will see them develop. Anyway, I've been rambling on for way too long. This is Star Girl Season 1, Episode 7. Let's get right into the reaction. Oh, okay, so he's not punching that anymore, okay. Alright, looks like she's trained more intensely. Okay, they will to be prepared next time. Okay, that's good, that's good. I still understand why they're bringing. Uh, Did you make us lunch? We didn't see it in there. I got busy. Hope you have a great day. You know, you probably have a better idea. Allison, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you showing interest in wanting to teach Courtney how to drive. Really wish you would have talked to me about this. I'm sorry. I should have told you. I should tell you everything. You look beautiful today. Man, are they lucky that we're married. All right, good so sister. He said, oh, guess what? I'm a superhero. Oh, I'll check in with you later. <laughs> All right. Okay, back to the hospital. I just I can't leave him. Okay, I would be the same way if it was my dad. I'm so sorry. Stay with me a while. Please don't tell me that this is going to be centered around her. Because she is. Yeah. <laughs> but they're, they've developed uh, Henry a bit here and there. It's good. Okay, for a second, I thought it was just gonna be him and Courtney, and I'm like, wait, are they gonna set up a relationship or something? Okay, sir. Then her mom died and her dad got married. Twice, actually. She became the scariest kid in the fourth grade. Jordan? Thank you. You've done such a great job here. You and your family should be proud. Well, and here again. I wanted to remind everyone of the pre-game pep- Why are you such a bitch? Thank you. Thank you. Someone said what it. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Oh, it's that janitor. It's that janitor again. These shoes are- Not something good in it. Okay. Damn, he's gotten. He's probably gonna be- Is he gonna be important? I'm not up for it. I'm not even playing in the game tonight. You're taking me. You wanna go to that dance? Oh, are we gonna finally see what's up with this janitor? Wait, is. Oh, what's that character's name? I remember him from the Justice League Unlimited cartoon. Oh, it is him! Oh, what's his name? Um... Okay, 
okay, class. Shiny Knight, right. that's his name. Is he Shiny Knight? Remember to put your safety glasses on. We are dealing with I'm pretty sure the janitor is Shiny Oh no. Oh, she's gonna have to partner up with Oh okay. Yeah, I'm alright, that's what I thought. Alright, let's see what what she's gonna say. You have forty-five minutes. Oh geometry. Okay, they're putting more focus on Henry's powers. Okay, yeah, yeah, they're definitely developing him to become either a villain or a hero. Who knows? All right, this is interesting. There's. All right, okay, I'm liking this. I'm showing more and more of his powers. All right. Are they really gonna try and make me care for her and make her friends with Courtney? I'm really not liking where this is going. <laughs> Let me guess, she only invited her over because they have the dead parent um, similarity. Okay. None of your business. All right. Yeah. No. Of course. I'm sorry. It's not. Maybe even her stepmom is afraid of her. Do you really? So you're disobeying me again. No, I'm not disobeying you. What? Oh, um, what the? Very strict instructions. You are in so much trouble. What? Is hey, Cindy. it? Is her dad like <laughs> abusive or something? I, I don't know. Oh shit! Is this the ISA headquarters? The Okay, alright, I'm now more interested in her character now. Okay. Okay, so she knows about it. Right. Who's her dad, though? Of America. What? Oh my god. <laughs> Let's go. That's how they're gonna train? Yeah, I'm with you, Rick. Trust you, Pat. Yeah, I'm with you, Rick. Like, how are they gonna train like that? What? Like, I expected him to like build, like, I don't know, like. So a few decades ago, battling against Wildcat and Green Lantern. Oh, a Green Lantern name drop. Okay. Oh, so she's Dragon King's daughter. Okay. Can't take what exactly? Oh shit. Right. Fucking now. Assassin's Creed. There are more important things at stake. Okay, I kind of like this, you know, putting in some similarities between Sydney and uh, Courtney. You know, both of them are impatient and want to be get into the action. All right, I kind of like that. Our experiment. Damn. Dear child. Not even up. You're awful. Not even a per he doesn't even treat her like a person. She was just waiting for me to approach her. I have a feeling that Cameron's gonna ask Courtney out. That'd be interesting. That's the only person I can really think of at, at the moment, because that's the only person that Cameron's interacted with on, on screen. Yeah. I was hoping you'd be here. Oh, it is! He is gonna ask her. Oh, okay. I'm interested to see what Courtney's answer is. to go to dance, so I can go talk to Cindy. She and I can hang out some other time. Okay. Oh, that's just gonna piss her off even more. Oh, gosh. He's had the most screen time in this episode so far. He's gonna... I feel like he's gonna be very important somehow. What if they... Okay. What if they bring him into the JSA and he trains them? Uh, that could be interesting if he is Shiny Knight. I'm pretty... I'm like 99% sure he's Shiny Knight. Oh. What the heck? Ooh. Oh, damn! 
Don't say her name. Okay, but they're gonna need to find some way to explain all that property damage. Be taking corner to these games. Ooh, alright, corner using that gym gymnastic skills. Oh yeah, she's relying too much on the staff. Oh. Ooh. Oh, she have regeneration? Damn. Ooh. Okay, she's got super strength and regeneration. What else does she have? Okay, hit assassin screen, hidden blades. Okay. Oh, okay, nice 360. Camera moving. Oh! Oh, it's the janitor! It is all life. He's shiny knight. Damn, he came to the rescue. Oh, is she gonna take off her mask and she's gonna realize it's Courtney? Was he a part of the GSA? Alright, so that was Star Girl season what episode seven? Damn, these episodes are getting better and better. Um I think this might be Man, I don't know. I think this actually might top that uh ISA fight last episode, definitely. Like the choreography was definitely better. I think it's because it was a 1v1 instead of, you know, switching between, you know, uh multiple fights. Uh, like the camera movement was really good in the fight. Uh, the choreography was amazing. Um, although my my little uh, nitpick is just um, um, Sydney or her stunt double is moving a little slow. That's probably just the suit though, because she did move a little slow when they were. Go I did notice that, but that's like my only nitpick. It's not. I'm not trying to say it was a bad fight because it was uh, it was slow. It was probably just um, it was probably really hard to move the suit because um. It looks like, uh, from what I saw, I need to look at it again, because it could be leather, and I do know leather is kind of hard to move in. Like, especially, a good example of that was, uh, Grant Gustin, um, in the first, in season one of The Flash. Like, he even stated that was extremely hard to move in, so they kept on making adjustments, like, on the cowl and stuff, uh, to move around in, and that's, I think that's mainly why in season five and season six, they switched from the leather to, uh, the spandex. Um, so, I think that's mainly why, um, she was moving so slow, but damn, that was a good-ass fight. And they revealed the janitor is important. I knew it. I didn't know who he was, but he is Shiny Knight. Uh, it took me a while earlier to figure out what his name was, because I remember there was a character that I think he is, in my opinion, because he fights with a sword, and he does talk a little bit, like, old-style. So, I think he's Shiny Knight, um... Because he had the sword, he had like a chalice too, and he had like a horse, so, and that's uh, why I thought that he was Shiny Knight. Because I think, it, because in Justice League Unlimited, there was a character named Shiny Knight in like gold armor, and I think he also rode on a, a horse or a pegasus, I can't remember which. But, um, yeah, and he also called, uh, she also, I mean, he also said Stripesy, so was Shiny Knight a part of the JSA? Because I um I don't rem I need to look back at episode one when they when Cordy found that picture of all the JSA members because I don't remember him there maybe he worked with the JSA or something but damn I am invested I want to know more about Shiny Knight now like because I'm wondering maybe he will approach Courtney and tell him his identity because I think Courtney like probably vaguely saw saw uh, someone saved her but um damn that was such a good episode um. Oh, I want to say, like, I want to know um, how big the ISA headquarters is, because it's underneath the school and underneath Sydney's house. I want to know, like, how close Sydney's house is from the school, the distance between the two, because it's pretty far. And that's one huge ass headquarters, and I gotta say, like, Ice, if Ice Cold was is the person behind the architecture of Dragon King, props to them, man. Like, uh, that's a uh, that's some good ass architecture, and um. Uh, yeah, uh, they're probably fucking loaded. They, like they probably give. Uh, it's actually that's probably from the gambler because he's the money maker. But damn, that was a great episode, great fight, great choreography, great camera work all around. Um, I also did like how they uh, developed, started to the 
I cannot speak, started to develop um, Henry as a character uh, a little bit. Like, we do see a more sympathetic side to him now that his dad is uh, in a coma because before he was like a, 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 a basically a typical jock like character, you know, the douchey jock character, especially in the first episode. But later we did see more of his sympathetic side. So. Uh, I don't know, maybe he could become a hero, but for the time being, I think he will be a villain. I know uh, someone told me in the comments, in one of my previous videos, that he is a hero in the comics, so who knows. Um, Cameron's got some more screen time, you know? I, I kind of I kinda see the chemistry between the two of them. I can also see Rick and Courtney getting together. I can still see that for some reason. Uh, I don't know. I think it would be weird to see Rick get together with someone like uh, Yolanda. Because they haven't had a whole lot of chemistry together. Damn. Now, uh, I think this is probably good for Courtney because she needs to realize the value of teamwork. Because she got her ass kicked by Sydney. Like, uh, I mean, she actually, I want to say she completely got her ass kicked because she actually put up a pretty good fight and actually got some pretty good hits in. Uh, and if Sydney didn't have uh, regeneration, she probably could have taken her down. But so far, she has super strength um, and regeneration and hidden blades, but I don't think that's her, that's her power. Or maybe it does come from her uh, uh, body, because she did have that in her civilian clothes, but I think that's just hidden blades. I don't think that's uh, a part of her power. Maybe it is. I don't know. We haven't seen much of that. But uh, yeah, that was, that was crazy. Um... I'm, I think that this will probably put her seat at the table. I could definitely see Dragon King roasting the hell out of her. And if we see that, I cannot wait to see that because I really do not like Sydney. I think I like Sydney a little bit more now than I know who she is. But, I mean, she's just such an unbearable character when she's in her high school form. Uh, and part of me does feel a little bit bad for her because it was just the way she was raised. Because um, she isn't raised like a person. Like, she's just treated as... Uh, an experiment, which I guess she technically is, but you get what I mean. She isn't. She wasn't raised properly. Uh, I mean, it's expected because she was raised by whatever the hell Dragon King is, and her mom died, and she has a stepmom that doesn't even, or a babysitter that is afraid of her. I guess it was the way her she was raised, but um, part of me does feel bad for her. Um. Because she does have some similarities to uh, Courtney in in a way that I did notice how, you know, they, they obviously had a similarity between, you know, one of their parents died when they were young. And also them being, you know, like, too headstrong and too over-eager to go head first in. Um, but the thing is, is that uh, Sydney probably has even more confidence in her. And I think that's probably going to be her downfall when Courtney fights her again. Because she's probably going to be even more overconfident now to be a part of the ISA. And that's probably going to lead to a conflict. Because I think maybe once Courtney gets some more training in, it may learn some value of teamwork. Which faces off, uh, faces off against Courtney again. Whether that's alone or with the other GSA, I think Courtney will win this time. Um, mainly because she'll have better training. She'll actually, hopefully, she'll actually start to think... Um, Instead of just fighting, she'll also try to strategize a bit. Because uh, I did notice, like, and even Sydney did notice that when she was chasing after her, once she got rid of the staff, uh, she does seem almost defenseless. So I think uh, a good thing for her to do, to try to train, and I hope that they do uh, go up uh, to expand upon this and show us in her training is that she needs to learn how to fight without her staff. Because once she gets, uh, someone knocks that staff away. Uh, she needs to know how to defend herself, because without the staff, she has no powers. So, you know, that's something. Uh, but damn, uh, it was it was almost, I don't want to say it was hard to watch, but, I, but it was uh, pretty brutal uh, for her uh, for getting that beating. But I do think that she needed that, because she now needs to know how high the stakes are. I mean, they already kind of saw how high the stakes were in the last episode, but now that she knows uh, better, even more ISA members than they thought... Um, she's gonna know that, you know, she needs, she now need, knows that she can't do it alone, like, she's too headstrong and needs to learn about teamwork, and I did like that, and hopefully this develops her character a bit, because, uh, for, for the past few episodes, uh, at least at the start, she's kinda, she hasn't really developed that much as a character, I understood, I mean, I understand that they needed time to, for, develop the other, uh, JSA members, 
Uh, so I'm very curious to see how uh, all that's gonna go. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm just I keep thinking back to uh, that reveal of him being sh of that janitor being Shining Knight, and I'm very curious to see um, if he's gonna approach Pat because I, I remember he said Stripesy. Uh, I think earlier I said he, he called Courtney Stripesy. I think um, if I did, uh, I'm sorry. But uh, I forgot that Stripe C was um, Pat and not Starman. So I'm very curious to see um, how he's going to approach him. Because I think it would be really cool for him to uh, train them. Because it seems like he's a, a legitimately trained fighter. At least for what we've seen. Now I'm very curious to see what his actual... If he has actual powers. Because I remember in Just League Unlimited he was just a knight. So I'm very curious to see if there's... Anything else upon it? Because he reminds me of a character from uh, Ben 10, I think it was Ultimate Alien, where there was like this old dude that became this young knight. If you all remember that character, I think his name was just George. Um, oh yeah, I think his name was Old George, if I remember correctly. If you guys all watch uh, the uh, older Ben 10 series, you probably know who I'm talking about. He kind of reminds me, I wonder if they're going to do something similar with um, Shiny Knight, where he can has the ability to go back to his prime state. Like, maybe, um, maybe his armor has, like, some kind of enchantment or something where he, um, becomes young. That would be pretty cool. I mean, he goes in and fights the, uh, ISA. Um, but yeah, that was a really good reveal for his character. That, like, that was so good. Uh, props to writers. Like, this is how you write a superhero show. Like, this is a great first season. I am gonna say this. I wish the Arrowverse was this good in terms of production and planning and writing because it does seem like they took a lot more time with um, Stargirl. And also Stargirl has, um, doesn't really need to be as long as something like The Flash or Supergirl or Arrow with the 20... What, is, what are they now? 22 episodes? I think they used to be 23, but I think they uh, shut it down to 22. Um, and in a lot, and because of that length, they need to find a way to fill in all those episodes, and they can't have it all based on the full story for some reason, and they have a lot of, like, fillery episodes. Um, here, um, this is why I like shows like this and Black Lightning, because of how short the seasons are, and I guess a little bit of, I don't know, I kind of lost interest in Legends, I heard Season 5 was good, um, I haven't really finished, I started watching Season 5, um, I think I'm on, like, the third or fourth episode. Um, it's still... It's not... Legends is just not my show. I, uh, I'll probably just watch it at some point in my own time and maybe do more videos on that, like, ranking videos. But anyway, getting back to what I'm saying about Stargirl, I wish the Arrowverse had, like, this much playing. I understand that they're on the CW, but this is why I wished that once DC Universe came out, I was like, oh, this is a good opportunity to move some of the Arrowverse shows to DC Universe. I mean, there was good, there had to be, like, some contracting stuff, but I think it would be very beneficial because they would have higher production value, higher budget, better writers. Overall, it would have made the show better, but now I think I heard that DC Universe might shut down, which I can understand that, you know, DC Universe wasn't really too successful. But now with HBO Max, because I think uh, HBO Max is making a Green Lantern series, and I think they announced they're, they're making a Just League Dark series. And I'm thinking... And they already put Batwoman on HBO Max, as far as I, I know, and a few other DC properties. So why not just take those shows and put it um, on uh, HBO Max? Because I know uh, Do uh, I just started watching Doom Patrol Season 2 on HBO Max, so I'm like, I I'm thinking after Stargirl Season 1, they could move Stargirl to HBO Max. So maybe, uh, my hope is that one day they'll move the Arrowverse shows to HBO Max, because, like... Look, I, I haven't watched Game of Thrones, I guess, all the way through, but I've seen, like, clips that the CG looks really good. It's because of the high production value with uh, HBO. So this is why I wished that the Arrowverse had something like this, where it had a higher production value, better writing, and it had more planning into the writing of the season. Because, I mean, I still like the Arrowverse, don't get me wrong, but it, it's not as good as it used to be, you know? I, I think I speak for everyone. That's definitely not as good as it used to be. But anyway, back to Star Girl. Um, uh, I know I'm not. I'm the kind of guy that isn't really a big fan of shipping, but you know, I can I can see Cameron and Courtney being a couple. You know, I I can kind of see that they have some chemistry, even though you know Cameron had like what two scenes with Courtney. 
But, um, you know, I, I could see that. And I'm very curious to see how that's going to turn out if um, they do start dating. Because there's not really a whole lot of episodes left. Because I think we're more than halfway through the season, or we're halfway through, because there's, there's 13 episodes. I guess we're technically halfway through the season. So I'm very curious to see if they're going to go down the route. Like, uh, Cameron starts dating Courtney, and then maybe they get close enough and Cameron finds out who his dad is. Because I think it would be really cool if he finds out what his who, what his dad really is, and also who Courtney is, and he, he it will eventually come down to that dilemma. Who, whose side does he choose? Does he choose his dad's side, who he's known for a long time, but he also knows that he's been lying to him for his whole life, and is a villain who kills people, or would he choose Courtney? who is fighting against that, and it has also lied to him. So I think that will be a very cool uh, character-driving moment for Cameron if they do go down that route. Uh, but, uh, yeah, um, this was a great episode. Um, uh, there wasn't as much train as I thought there was going to be. Um, I guess we're probably going to see that in a later episode, because this was uh, Shiv Part 1. So I'm wondering what Part 2 is going to be like. Uh, we'll see. But, damn, that was a good episode. These episodes are getting better and better. Good, great job, Star Girl. Like this is easily one of the best DC shows I've ever watched so far. I put this up there with OG Arrow, like Arrow season one and season two, and OG Flash season one and season two. Um, I can't really think of any other DC shows that are that good. Uh, because I um I didn't watch Smallville when it came out because I was just uh I I wouldn't say I d never got into it. But I just, um, I never, uh, watched it all the way through when it came out. And I still haven't. In fact, um, I have actually started watching it. I'm only, like, the first, I've only, like, halfway through the first, the second episode. Uh, which I am planning on reacting, uh, to, I already reacted to the first episode. Uh, something went wrong with OBS, and my computer did crash while I was watching the second episode. So I'm kind of, hopefully, uh, I can... I don't really want to re-record everything, um, because I think the file was actually lost for some reason, so there won't be a reaction to episode 2 of Smallville. But, um, so far, it's, it's, I mean, I need a little bit more to get into the show, but, um, I heard great things that's good. I have heard that some complaints that it was not a good finale, and that it went on too long, but I don't know. So far, you know, it's okay. I mean, I'm only, like... A episode and a half into the show so we'll see how it goes so yeah i hope you guys do enjoy that i will be doing small reactions on fridays because you know i have nothing on fridays um in terms of movie reactions i am planning on possibly moving movie reactions to sundays because i have nothing to do on sundays i've been given a lot more work on saturdays um both um because my shifts kind of change uh uh, at home, because I do a lot of work at home, because, you know, with this world going around, I can't really, uh, do work at a business out there because of COVID, uh, so I do a lot of work at home, like, because I have, um, a lot of land, so I have to do a lot of work with my dad, so Saturdays isn't at, is more busy than I thought it was going to be, so I might move my movie reaction to Sundays, I'll probably make a whole update video on that. But, um, yeah, overall, great Stargirl episode. Uh, definitely my favorite so far in terms of character writing with certain characters. And they actually made me somewhat care for Sydney a bit. I mean, I still think Sydney is a brat and a bitch. But I, I, I will admit that she actually has a, somewhat of a reason to be that way. It was just the way she was raised. Uh, and um, she's a somewhat interesting character now. Um, I feel like that she's kind of like a, the polar opposite to Courtney, definitely. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if we're going to see more with some of the other kids, especially with Artemis, um, Henry, and Cameron. We probably will throughout the season. Um, but, um, yeah. I'm also wondering if the ISA will be fully taken down, because I can definitely see... Because Icicle is definitely the main villain. Um, so... I could possibly see... I school being taken down, but the ISA will probably carry over to season two. I can see them doing that, but we'll see. But uh, anyway, this is probably the longest uh, review breakdown talk I've done. So I'm going to end it right here before the video gets too long. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, this is a great episode. What did you guys think of the episode? Comment down below. And did you guys uh, suspect that uh, the janitor was Shining Knight? Because um, 
I don't know too much about that character. I heard a few rumors that he was um, Shiny Knight, but I never believed it. Because um, I feel like that was a bit of a stretch before. Because I haven't heard that theory, I just never believed it. That's why I was so shocked when I saw him being revealed as Shiny Knight. Um, also, what were you guys' uh, favorite parts of the episode? And did you like the episode as much as I did, or did you not like it? I'd like to get that discussion going on. And what are your theories for some of these characters going forward? Like, for starters, will Cameron be a hero? Will, will Cameron be a hero? Will Cameron be a villain? Will Henry be a hero, or will Henry be a villain? And do you think Sydney is worth redemption or something? Uh, and also, what are your theories on Shiny Knight? Will he come into the fold and help out the JSA? Uh, will he stay more in the background? Where are you guys theories? I'd like to get that discussion going on. And finally, before I end it, do you guys ship K uh, Courtney and Cameron? I'd like to hear you guys' thoughts. But anyway, guys, I'm going to end it right here. This is a great episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Turn on notifications so you miss any future content. Also, feel free to follow me on Instagram. All the good stuff. And, yeah, this was a great episode. Oh, man. I think I need to take a breather before I start editing. But anyway, this was Star Girl Season 1, Episode 7. Great episode. 10 out of 10, 100%. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next reaction. Uh, yeah, see you guys later.